Today, I want to talk about image manipulation. More specifically, I want to dive into the fundamentals that allow you to take an image and apply some sort of effect to it. This effect can be aesthetic, like a blur or sharpen, or it can be more for utility as seen in edge detection algorithms. So, in this video, we're going to be implementing our own image manipulation program in Rust, pulling concepts from mathematics and statistics. But first, this is an already solved problem, so why should we care? Let's go ahead and open up a quick Python notebook. First, we import numpy, matplotlib, and zv2. Then we can go ahead and open up a local image on the computer and display it using matplotlib. Then, we can define a few different kernels to see how they affect our output image. The most basic of these are Sharpen and Gaussian, but these kernels can also give some pretty interesting effects like edge detection, 3D embossing effects, motion blur, and my personal favorite, edge detection. While these fancy libraries from Python make our lives easier, a lot of the implementation is hidden away from us. How do these algorithms work under the hood? First, we need to talk about convolutions. What even is a convolution? Well, this is the mathematical formula, but I've always found this formula to not be entirely useful to me. For our purposes, a convolution is a way to combine one array with another to result in an output array that represents an average between the two arrays. For example, if I have an array of data represented in red, then I can apply a second smaller array, typically called a kernel, represented in blue, and take the dot product between a subset of the first array and the second array. Then you can shift the kernel by one and repeat the process. Using a kernel where the values are an even distribution of numbers gives us a sort of moving average, smoothing out the input array. 3blue1brown one brown has an excellent video diving deeper into the mathematical reasoning behind this operation, which I highly encourage you to check out in the description. But, a simple smoothing kernel is not the only one that we can apply. We can also try others such as a Gaussian distribution. The kernel values also don't have to be positive as well. We can use an edge detection kernel that has negative values used to detect where there is a large difference between some values. Let's take a look at how we can apply this operation in Rust. First, we create a new vector which will hold our output. Then, we iterate over a range of the input, being careful not to step over bounds by subtracting the kernel length. Then, inside each loop body, we can take the dot product of a subslice of the input vector and the kernel to get our output value for this index. If we want the output array to be the same size as the input, then we can pad the input with zeros on each side so that we can safely travel the full length of the input vector without having to worry about the out of bounds issues. Zero padding is a common method used to handle this case. Looking at this code, we can see what a convolution really is a continuous function of dot products along two differently sized arrays. While this code works perfectly for a one-dimensional array, a 1D image is not too interesting. Fortunately, porting this code to two dimensions is relatively straightforward. We just need to be mindful of exactly what is going on. Looking at the code for a 2D convolution, we can see just how similar this one is to the one-dimensional version. Instead of one for loop, we are looping over both dimensions of the input matrix and calculating the dot product along a sliding window. That's it. That's our image filtering algorithm. Let's write some basic code to process an image. First, we define what kernel we would like to use, in this case, a Gaussian one. Then, we read the image, which takes an image name and returns a grayscaled version of the image in a 2D vector. Next, we use the conf2d function we created earlier to calculate the convolution between our kernel and the input image. Lastly, we save our modified image. As you can see, our modified image is gray and slightly blurry. This means that our image processing worked. Let's go ahead and try out some other kernels. We can try an edge detection algorithm which creates a very grainy image. The emboss kernel will overemphasize smaller details and we can increase the distribution of a Gaussian to create a larger blur. This code works great for smaller tinkering with image manipulation, but there is one issue with it. It's very slow. Looking back at the code, we can see that there are two for loops going on with additional looping for the kernel within each nested loop. This algorithm runs at O n squared runtime speed, which is fine for smaller images and kernels, but as we increase the image and kernel size, the algorithm will run slower and slower. When we increase the image resolution to 4K and run a 31 by 31 kernel against it, running this code in release mode takes around seven and a half seconds. If we were to use this code in a production application, this runtime would be unacceptable, but there is a trick we can use to increase the runtime dramatically. First, we need to talk about Fourier transforms. 
From Wikipedia, a discrete Fourier transform converts a finite sequence of equally spaced samples of a function into a same length sequence of equally spaced samples of the discrete time Fourier transform, which is a complexed function of frequency. What this means exactly is not the point of this video. The point is, is that we can use this Fourier transform on our two lists, multiply them element-wise together, then calculate the inverse discrete Fourier transform as a shortcut to calculate the convolution. Let's take a look at the discrete Fourier transform algorithm implemented in Rust. We have to use complex numbers to work in the frequency domain, but the num package makes this easy for us. While this algorithm looks simple to use, one thing that may stick out to you is the fact that this algorithm runs in O n squared time. So, in attempting to find a backdoor solution to our convolution problem, we ended up finding an algorithm with the same runtime problem. That's because there are other algorithms that can calculate the discrete Fourier transform on a list of numbers. Algorithms that accomplish this feat in a runtime complexity of O n log n are called fast Fourier transforms. One such implementation is the Cooley Turkey algorithm. Let's take a look at this in Python. This algorithm works by splitting the input lists in half recursively until an element size of 1, then calculates the DFT on each item individually, combining them together at the end. A limitation of this approach is that the input list has to have a length, which is a power of 2. The implementation is relatively the same in Rust, with a little bit more care going into allocating space for the left and right sides of the list. We can also write a quick piece of code to resize the input vector to a power of 2 before computing the FFT. In order to utilize the Fourier transform inside of our convolution function, we will need to edit the code significantly. First, we need to flatten the image and the kernel into a single dimension. The kernel also needs to be padded to be the same length as the input image with zeros. Then, we can calculate the FFT of both the image and the kernel. Then, we can iterate over the FFT results and multiply them together element-wise. We calculate the inverse Fourier transform to convert back into the frequency domain and reconstruct the image as a 2D vector and return it. Now, we can modify our code to use this new convolution function. And when we run it, it runs in 9.5 seconds. 3 seconds slower than our slow solution. So what is going on? Well, if you remember, our FFT function has to pad our inputs to the nearest power of 2, which can significantly increase the list size. Secondly, we can see that our produced image is significantly more blurry compared to our basic convolution function. This is because that padding combined with the complex numbers of the frequency domain causes there to be quite a bit of error in the calculation. What can we do about this? Well, fortunately Rust has a rich ecosystem of packages. One such package that does an exceptional job of implementing the fast Fourier transform is the Rust FFT crate. This package will use other more complex algorithms to calculate the FFT if the input list is not a power of 2. Let's go ahead and modify our code to use this new package. The start of the function is exactly the same as the Rust FFT package expects our vectors to also be one dimensional. Secondly, I am using a different method of padding the kernel called reflection padding as I got better output image results using this FFT implementation. Next, the Rust FFT package is used to calculate the two Fourier transforms. The same method is used to combine the two complex arrays as in the previous implementation, and the inverse Fourier transform is calculating using the package as well. Let's go ahead and give this code a shot. And it runs in just over a second a significant improvement over our default convolution implementation. There is some artifacting around the edges in this case, which can be a side effect of using the Fourier transforms to calculate image transformations. This can be avoided by padding the image more. This is all I have for image manipulation with convolutions, but there's one more thing that I want to talk about. Pooling. What exactly is pooling? Well, using Mario as an example, we can use the same sliding window approach as seen in the convolution example, but instead of applying a kernel to the window, we apply a function on the list of pixel values. For max pooling, you set the output pixel to the max value from the sliding window, so you end up with a pixelation effect on the output image. We can also apply the opposite operation, min pooling, where we take the minimum value from the sliding window of pixels. This gives a darker output image. On larger images, this effect can be quite interesting. There is average pooling as well, which should be equivalent to a convolution with an even distribution kernel. Another type of pooling is called L2 pooling, where we take the square root of the sum of squares in the region. 
We can also pull a random value from the pixel array called stochastic pooling. This is my personal favorite pooling algorithm as it gives a cool grainy effect on the image. Let's go ahead and implement this pooling function in Rust. First, we define a function named pool, which takes a generic parameter p. The function also takes an input, in our case, the 2D image and the pooling size. The function will return the modified image as a 2D vec, and the generic p-value is defined to be a mutating function that takes in a vector, in our case, the sliding window, and returns a float. We can add this function as a parameter as well. Next, we pad our input with zeros using the padding function from our convolution examples. Then, we allocate some space for our output. Now, we loop over the 2D array of our input, and inside the loop body, we can use some iterator methods to pull out our sliding window as a one-dimensional vector. We set the output at this index to the value returned from our predicate using our sliding window, and we return the output vector. Using this base pooling function, we can create public functions which use this base and perform the various operations we need for the pooling algorithm. Let's go ahead and test out some of these pooling algorithms. We kept the output of our pooling algorithm the same as our convolution functions, so this can be used as a drop-in replacement. Let's see how different pooling algorithms affect the look of an image. I hope you learned a thing or two from watching this video. A lot of care and time went into developing the code and visuals for it, and I encourage you to check out the repository where all of the code used for this video can be found. Feel free to fork the repository and play around with any functions that I created, some of which did not make it into this video.